back in the 30s, actually in the Olympic Peninsula, uh, people were paying their taxes in, in alternative money. Really? Yes. Some of the local uh, government agencies in, in Port Townsend and the peninsula, because they were so isolated yes. back in those days, they okay. weren't the ferries, you know, okay. um, they had no alternative but to accept uh, uh, the, the local currency, which were wooden dollars at that time. And the people were paying their taxes in alternative money. Wow. Until 1945, wow. when a lady from Port Townsend came across to Seattle and tried to exchange her wooden dollar for a USD. And that's and, what the, and the banks realized, like, oh, what are you doing with this? What is this? And she says, it's a wooden dollar. We're all using them on the penis peninsula. And the bankers went in and shut them down. So you can't do this. And that's an example of the monopoly that mm -hmm. the bankers have mm -hmm. and the level of control they have over people's economic lives. I'm Jenea Donaldson. In the wake of the 2008 financial mess, I think a lot of people have started saying, is there some alternative? I'm with Francis Ailey and Leah Ailey, who are talking about alternate money systems. Join me. Thank you for joining us again. Francis, you joined me in 06, and we yes. talked about an alternative to the money economy, and I'm glad to have you join us this time as well. What I want to do is back up and say, a lot has happened since 06. Things have really changed. <clears throat> what do you see happening that can help move people towards something different? Yeah, I guess for me the key point is to understand that the present bank issued monetary system is not sustainable. It's not workable and in 2008 we got a very rude reminder of just how unworkable it is and People need to realize that the problems with it are structural. They're built into the entire system. They're baked into the cave. Yeah, they can't be fixed by just uh, cosmetic changes. And this isn't just, I mean, this isn't just ugliness like all of the derivatives and the investment banks and all that kind of stuff. It's not just that. No. It's what's, more fundamental. What's um, we have a usurious monetary system. Usurious. Yes. Tell us what that means. A usurious monetary system is one where the money is issued as debt. Okay. It's not issued for the benefit and the well-being of the people. It's issued for private profit as debt. And the problem with usury is no matter which way you rig the system, the amount of interest that's owed against the principal gradually increases over time. And a few years ago, we pass the point where there's more interest owed, there's more debt owed, than there is money exists. Okay, let me let me make sure I understand because this is a really because we've all been we're living in it like fish in the in water, yeah. so it's like all we know. Right. Um, what we're saying is here's a here's a pot of debt because money is issued as debt, yeah. but when you go to pay and you buy you know your car your debt whatever and when you go to pay back your debt you have to pay some extra. That's the usury. That's the interest. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that something has that interest has to come from somewhere, yes. right? So you have to keep the pot growing to get some money from Peter to pay Paul, kind of a exactly. thing. Meaning, it's part of the infinite growth paradigm that our whole culture works on. Yes. I mean, I just want to make sure that's yes. a, that's our picture. There's and a direct connection between the growth paradigm that all the economists talk about yes. and the need to create more money just to keep the system afloat. In that sense. It is just a gigantic Ponzi scheme, and we all know what how Ponzi schemes end. They collapse with a whole lot they of destruction to. and so on. And yeah. so was 2008 kind of a, a, a foretaste or a, a mini taste of some of that collapse? Yes. yes, over the last 300 years that we've been using this kind of monetary system, there have just been a series of collapses. And what the bankers do is they just pour more and more money into the system to just keep it afloat. Oh. And we've reached a stage now where that is no longer viable. It no longer works. So pouring 
billions and trillions of dollars and pounds and Deutschmark and French francs and so on into the system is not it's holding it but for shorter and shorter and shorter periods of time. Oh, okay. And the collapses when they happen are more serious. So if if we're not working with a debt ba based system, are people exploring some alternatives to that that could work instead? And what would those be? Oh sure. There are actually many different ways to organize our monetary system and the usurious monetary system is just one type of monetary system. Hmm. There are many other variations. For instance, money doesn't have to be issued by bankers. The people can issue their own money. That's what we've been doing at Fourth Corner Exchange for years. Fourth Corner Exchange, I want to make sure people got that. That's a local a local money or money system? Not so local. It's We, we have members throughout the Pacific Northwest. So right. we cover a large geographical area, which is unusual for an alternative yeah. monetary system. They tend to be very geographically based. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're not so geographically based. Uh, we actually have Canadian members. Okay. So there's no restrictions on where our members can be. I mean, technically, we're actually a private members club, so you can be anywhere in the world and trade with Fourth Corner Exchange time dollars. Like okay. dollars. okay, all right. So, local um, Fourth Corner Exchange is one example of a way of exchanging differently. You know, you're doing it with members. It's a club, if you will, yes. right? To exchange goods, services, whatever. We, we can talk about that a little bit. Are there other? What other kinds of alternatives are are there? Or are there people trying, and with with what success? I mean, I'm going to ask because I knew there were Ithaca dollars in Ithaca, New York, that yes. they issued what decades ago, something yes. like that, which are real pieces of they are paper, right? Printed currency, yes. Okay, and how does it does it work similarly to how does it work? Yes. Um, well, I mean, who? these successful systems like Ithaca hours and Berkshires, because it's actually possible to set up, it's, it's too easy in a way to set up an alternative monetary system. All you have to do is design a currency and then implement it. That's not where the real problems lie. I mean, as long as you've got a non-usurious monetary system and the people are issuing it, those are the two key factors, okay. then you're probably on the right track. The real problem is in educating people about why it's not a good idea to use usur usurious money okay. in the first place okay. and why they have to have control of the issue of the currency also. If, we, you, if you can't issue the currency as and when you need it, you're being restricted in the way that you can exchange your goods and services. You cannot exchange your goods, goods and services freely. If you're relying on somebody else, that is, the bank, I need the bank to, to give me some money before I can trade with anyone else. And it's got nothing to do with the value or the quality of the goods and services that I have they literally end up controlling our economic futures. And they determine whether or not we can trade, which is ridiculous, it's insane. I mm. mean, this is not economic democracy. That's, that is the equivalent of an economic dictatorship. And, and we people are. need to realize mm. that they have other options, there are other ways of organizing ourselves and of exchanging our goods and services. Fourth Corner Exchange is one example. There okay. are several other good ones. Mm -hmm. But setting one of these things up is a real challenge because educating people about what's wrong with the mainstream monetary system and then talking to them about what their real options are and designing a healthy monetary system, those are real challenges. I can imagine because we've all lived with this and know it is the only possibility right. um, and don't even know how it works. I mean, that right. is that <laughs> the bigger picture because it... It may it seemingly may not seem to affect us. I mean, it does, but we may not see that right up. We're so close to it that we don't understand how it does affect us. Right. And don't understand that there could be a different system that could work actually better. One of the problems that what Francis was referring to in terms of education is that people, if people aren't educated about the differences between an alternative currency and national currency, the ordinary cash that we use every day, they come into an alternative system and they bring all of their thoughts and attitudes and feelings about money into that alternative system unchanged. Mm -hmm. And so they start acting within that alternative system the way they would with cash. And one of the things about conventional currency is that it's based on the principle of scarcity. Yes. People I, are I, afraid, people think, feel they have to hang on to it yes. because we don't have control of how that currency is issued. We, we're not the ones that determine how much of it is in circulation or whether we have access to it when we need it. Somebody else is in charge of that. 
And so there's a sense that you want to grab it and hold on to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if you can profit with the little that you have or the, the amount that you have, then you want to do that. Yes. So it gets in the way of relationships. It gets in the way of building relationships, building community. People talk about, oh, well, that's just business. As if business was something different from having a relationship with someone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which in the conventional system it is, because there's yes. a whole different yes. basis for exchanges, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's possible to have a currency that actually facilitates relationships, that actually encourages and rewards um, community-oriented behavior. Can you paint me just a picture, an example, I mean, of, of standing in that new life, if you will, and standing in that other reality, you know, you have something that you, you, you know, you're two separate, you know, you, ex you want something to exchange, and you're going to do it in the fourth corner exchange style, or, or, or an alternate money. Can you just, I'm just trying to get, put some bone, flesh on these right. bones, mm -hmm. what you're talking about. One of the consistent pieces of feedback I get from people when they sign up with Fourth Corner and start trading is they're shocked <clears throat> at how supportive and cooperative and helpful people are. They're surprised, and it's a big difference from the way they're used to trading in the mainstream economy. They're like, why is everybody so friendly? Why is everybody wanting to help me so much? Uh -huh. What happened to the competition? Mm. And mm. so one of our tasks is to retrain people and say, well, in the mainstream economy, it's competition that runs the whole game, yeah. scarcity and competition. Yeah. Yes. And what we've created here is a cooperative system. And so trust, goodwill, mutual help, wanting to create a community, it all happens here. Mm -hmm. And so there's a psychological switch that happens. Not everybody can actually make it, and some people, mm -hmm. it takes them quite a while. Mm -hmm. They have to do several mm -hmm. trades. Mm -hmm. And some people get it immediately. They're like, oh, this is where I've wanted to be my whole life. I, part of why I want to get back to the flesh and bones is I've noticed in the last couple of years in my area that that um, online groups like FreeCycle mm -hmm. have been getting really popular, we, or or the community bulletin board where people want to trade. It, it's not a, a an organized money system. It's still using the old, the debt based money, right. but but I'm finding that people are preferring where there's you know there's some relationship there. Yes. I, I can get that. So if I just joined the fourth corner exchange, and let's say I'm guessing that that, that I have that, that people have both things that they want, and people have things they can exchange. Mm -hmm. So how do I get started? It's kind of like an online bulletin board. You post the things that you want and mm -hmm. the things that you have to offer, mm -hmm. and then people can. Um, once you're a member, you decide what area you want to see listings. Geographical area. Geographical oh, okay. area. So everybody that has decided they want to see listings in your area will see the listings that you want and that you okay. that you have to, things that you have to offer. And also, they may, if they've elected to, they can they may be getting an email about that either weekly mm -hmm. or monthly mm -hmm. or daily mm -hmm. about you know what's on offer. And then they would be able to contact you. Well, if I wanted, let's say, let's say you have. Um, um, Something I want, you know. Mm -hmm. You got a book that I want, and I've just joined, mm -hmm. I, and I haven't. I don't know how do I, you know, do I have credit? Am I allowed to do that? How do you get? How do you get your part of the exchange if I want that book from you? I'm a newbie. Yeah, you don't have to earn life dollars before you can spend life dollars. Yes, life dollars. What's life a life dollars. dollar? Do you want to answer that? <laughs> <clears throat> That's our internal currency. And interestingly, back in 2002, when the original group that formed this, that I was a member of, when we got together, we talked about all different kinds of names, and we settled on life dollars because we saw that the mainstream economy is a death economy. Oh, yes. So we wanted yes, to make a contrast. Yes, all right. Do you want to, have to live in a death economy or a life economy? Mm -hmm. So we ended up calling our currency life dollars. And in, in a way, that fits very well because you put your life energy into the exchanges or the, what you have to offer or whatever, and so yes. Yes. life currency fits very well. So I don't have to have some life dollars no. in my little no. exchange yet. You can spend and go into what we call commitment. We don't call it debt. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. you're entering into a commitment to at some point during your membership to uh, repay to the community equivalently to what you've received. Okay, so if I gave you ten life dollars for the book of yours, right? I've committed to ten life dollars worth of something I have to offer 
you know, at least. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, probably wouldn't be ten life dogs unless the book was very valuable. I am. But <laughs> it's a collector's item. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you're the one who sets the price. Is yes. that right? Well, and it's it's actually a negotiation. Or it's some, oh, that's. I mean, I can say this is how much I want. Yes. And you yes. might say, well, I'll give you this much. Right. You know, or actually, I think it's worth more than what you're asking, so uh -huh. I'll give you some uh -huh. extra. That happens there's, too. There's your community building right there. I exactly. see that in that conversation about that. Yeah. Um, that gives me a flavor. I mean, a flavor. So once somebody gets over, starts into that hurdle. You know, and I imagine they're checking the website to see what are people offering, putting out, what do I want to get, and you're mm -hmm. going to get a, like, give me a flavor. How many, if your life dollars worth of exchanges have happened, say, in the last, what are you now, 11 years, 10 years, or even last year? Yeah, well, let, any, before we say that, jumping we should, ahead too far? we should probably say that um, life, a life dollar is actually a unit of time, time. so it's worth an hour of time. Ah, and in terms of its um, cash value, if you like, it would be whatever the uh, a living wage is in your community. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you so have, have to predetermine kind of what that is. You have to understand that before you can understand how to say how many exchanges or how much of, thank you. how much in terms of dollars. Important thing. So yeah. in your county, in Washington County here, what is a life dollar worth? About <clears throat> probably about twelve dollars yeah. now. Okay, because I was yeah. that, that'd be about what I would expect. Maybe a little more down in California. All right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So you think about that when you. I mean, I'm sure people have to, mm -hmm. because if you're t you're tying it to something, life again, right? A living yes. wage. Right. Good for you. Yep. Talk about life. Yeah. Okay. So in that sense, they're not affected by the ups and downs of the dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, the dollar could mm -hmm. crash and everything suddenly worth you know, cost twice as much to buy, but that wouldn't affect life dollars. Because life dollars are still, we would still have 24 hours in every day. And we never get more than that. That's true. That's so true. time yeah. is a constant in that sense. How do you deal with the, um, I can imagine it being a perfect medium of exchange for time and time, time-based services, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll trade you an hour of, you know, cooking at your house to prepare for your party, and you trade me an hour of your time or whatever valuing, you know, mm -hmm. roughly for, um, you know, fixing my my tire. So I can see that if there could be a leveling effect. People may change, you know, the value of things. But but basically, if it's my hour and your hour, it's a very d democratizing kind of notion. What do you do when there are costs involved? I'm thinking about the farmer who has to buy seeds, say, or the dressmaker who has to pack you know, equipment or yes. you know infrastructure. How how do people deal with, or do they not offer much in the way of things that require have material costs, products? There's two ways of dealing with that. One is that when you have a cash outlay, conventional currency outlay you can actually exchange for part life dollars and part cash. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people do that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's basically up to the two people who are trading to keep to, to agree whether to do that or not and what the percentage is. Mm -hmm. We don't keep any records of anybody's cash transactions. Mm -hmm. um, that's just between the two people involved. I see. And the other possibility is that you can charge more in terms of, charge enough in terms of life dollars to make up for the fact that you're also having to pay cash. Ah. So it doesn't have to be a one hour for one hour equivalence. I see. Because the problem with that is that when you get into the more sophisticated services, it becomes difficult. Because, you know, for example, I'm a therapist. And there's actually a lot that goes into me being able to be there for that one hour mm -hmm. for someone. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that I have to put in outside of that one hour. And if I can't, if I can't, if, if an economic system doesn't allow me to take that into account, then it's not going to work for me. Sure, I can get you that. Know? That your training is going to be what right. part there's, of your investment. There's my training, there's supervision, uh -huh. there's the way I have to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I can't see 40 clients a week, Licensing. you know, oh, yeah. all, all the other expenses and then all the self-employed expenses that anyone who's self-employed has. Yes, yes. You know, there's a lot to take into account. And then sometimes there's preparation or research mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, there's, and if, and you have to have a way of being able to value that yes. within the trade. Otherwise, it's really not workable. I can get that. Yes. 
Yes. So you're back to, in a sense, you're, you're the situation of sort of um, setting your value mm -hmm. on the exchange and being open to some negotiating and and I, I, now I can see a better flavor of why community yes. uh, you, you, you're building relationships. It's exactly. The whole, the whole it's works. all about relationships. What, yeah. do you, what do you find? I'm jumping. So what do you find is, an, is the obstacle to, to people's just joining and beginning to be part of this? I mean, a real, you mentioned the education, sort of mm -hmm. turning their minds to the other direction. Um, but I can imagine possibilities, certainly when one is starting, is are there, are there offerings on there that are things that you really want and need? I mean, in my area, I'd be looking for people that have firewood or, you know, a CSA box or, or t t very tangible things that I would, would need. Um, so I'm, my question is, what, what do you find in terms of, is, is it inherently successful with services like your, your therapy? and mm. not with other areas? Mm. Many of the alternative monetary systems that have sprung up in the last 20 to 25 years, they've been very successful in specific ways and uns unsuccessful in other ways. Mm. Uh, for instance, some systems have lots of massage therapists. Yes. But no accountants. Mm -hmm. What we've discovered is that uh, with our, our currency, and because we're not limiting it to a sp specific geographical location, we have a much broader spread of goods and services available. So we're not short on the professional services in the way that many other systems are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because we're not doing what the time banks do, which is legislate an hour for an hour equivalents, yes. which is a great way of leveling the playing field, but it prevents professional services from coming into the system. And so we have a lot of people doing professional stuff, and we have a few businesses too. Mm -hmm. The limits we've pushed, we're pushing up against at the moment <clears throat> is really about educating people and demonstrating to them, showing them that there are real alter alternatives to bank-issued money, and showing them how to exchange goods and services without using bank-issued money. I mean, we're so stuck in using bank issued money, I mean, they, the bankers have us over a barrel, and you know most people have a lot of trouble getting out of that mindset. They're so used to using a scarcity, competitive-based uh, economic monetary system that they cannot imagine that there's anything else out there. That's been one of our biggest hurdles. So the hurdle is that, if I understand you right, it's just getting people even to 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 join and yes. start. Yes. Is that is that is that right? Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I'll back up and say, are there fees for joining? I mean, there's got to be some administration in here. You've got a, you know, a network and da 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 da. I don't know what else. Yes. Um, sure. It's twenty five dollars a year. So it's a, oh. it's a, you know, twenty five usurious dollars. Yes. Well, unfortunately, Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Which some some members pay part of their membership fee in life dollars as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like. If there are services that this so is this a business? I mean, is this a licensed? Yes. You know, local, private business kind of thing? Yes. I see. Okay. And you run it? Yes. Okay. Then, so so what I see is that the, the hurdle is primarily at, at that you overcome, is at, at the get-go. Is that even just, let's walk into this door and try it. Mm -hmm. place. Yeah, for a yeah. lot of people it's strange, it's unusual, they're only used to using uh, national currency and um, yeah it's a strange new experience and especially that we're a cooperative economy mm. I mean the rules are completely different they're, they're the opposite uh, but for those who jump in and take the, the risk and start trading it's common for people to say wow I've always wanted to be part of something like this to be working for everyone's benefit not mm -hmm. just my own uh -huh. and only looking after myself wow. and competing against other people uh, so that transition is, is a big step. A lot of people are not quite ready to make it. Mm. And especially businesses, I mean, they have to really watch out for the bottom line. So if you're a business, it's a risk doing something like this. I could imagine because they still have to be in comp I mean, they are still living in a competitive system exactly. mm. with other businesses yeah. or whatever. I mean, I can imagine a grocery store would be a, a extremely challenging because mm. that's a very very small margin from what I understand yeah. and so even if you're a natural food store here 
your co-op wanted, and it's a cooperative, so it's already got some values that would match this. But I would imagine that because of the industry that that's part of, it would be really tough for them to to, to become part of the exchange, at least the way it works now. Yes, it's a challenge. The, the good part of it is you don't have to jump in all in one go. You can trade partly in life dollars and partly in national currency. There's no okay. problem with that. Okay. So you, what, I, what I tell business people is what they need to do is they need to charge a small percentage in life dollars and the rest in USD until they feel really comfortable and secure and they can pass on their life dollars to other people in the system mm -hmm. uh, and they mm -hmm. don't end up accruing a massive amount. I, I would imagine that's important because if you're, if you're yeah. selling a product, you want to make sure you've got folks on the other side that you can sp spend it, use so, it for something else you need, the bookkeeper, so. the, the whatever, yeah. the, the cleanup crew, the construction, whatever it is. Yeah. So that's partly a question that would seem to me uh, an issue of, of sort of, it has to be a large enough community of people with enough diversity of skills and businesses to really kind of go over the hurdle of becoming a really, you know, a really active, viable, dynamic, yeah. alternative economy. Yeah. yeah. We've been very successful, going back to your earlier question about the volume of, of mm -hmm. exchanges, mm -hmm. uh, in the last nine, ten years, our members have exchanged $1.4 million worth of goods and services. That puts us in the top like two or three alternative monetary systems in the world. Congratulations. Yeah. Whoa. Which has been a lot of hard work. You've uh, been at it a while, I, yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Good and for that's you. that's over seventeen thousand exchanges that have mm -hmm. taken place. Mm -hmm. That's a large volume of trading. But that's been amongst hundreds of members and not hundreds of thousands of yes. members. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and until we reach the tens and hundreds of thousands of members, there simply isn't going to be the spread of goods and services that people are going to need. And the proportion of life dollars that they can take against USD is going to be smaller mm -hmm. than larger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have members who are totally, totally committed to this and they prefer to do all their changes in life dollars if it's at all possible. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, they've, they've really taken on this this whole kind of like new economic paradigm, and it is, it's a new economic paradigm, it's a new way of thinking and acting around money, and it's a completely different set of expectations, all based on cooperation, trust and goodwill, rather than competition and scarcity. Don't you want a fourth corner exchange kind of economy in your town? I'm Jenea Donaldson, and you're with Leah and Francis Ailey, we're in the Bellingham, Washington area, join us next time.